So I reached out to Rick to see if he would want to do a follow-up interview, and uh, he graciously declined um, a video interview, but he did uh, send me all the answers written out uh, in, in true Rick fashion and with all of his little nuances in there as well. So uh, I'm going to read them out. First of all, he wanted to make sure that people were clear that there's a difference between sign writers and sign painters. Um, he wishes that we would have gotten into that in the documentary. For us, um, it wasn't it wasn't really part of the story that we were trying to tell. I think it's a very valuable piece of the larger culture, and and that deeper education uh, just wasn't wasn't working. We he definitely talked about it in our interview. Um, a painter on a scaffold on a building is not often a sign writer. There's a lot of sign writers that will work on glass and on the side of trucks and and um, and they do gold leaf and they do finer detail and, and this is a lot different than block style letters on a brick wall 60 feet up in the air. Both have their challenges, both have their art form, um, but they are very different practices uh, between the two. What did you first see that made you want to be a sign painter or sign writer? Um, and he said, I saw windows, vehicles, I loved drawing letters as a young guy, and it stuck when I saw Mark Northrup in Dauphin with his wife, and how clean and perfect their work seemed to be to me back then. What kind of people used to do this? What was the average personality? Who's getting into it these days? Very few people have enough hands-on math and pencil experience, sadly less and less. But I see tattoo artists and some designers from college capable. Unfortunately, you also need a bit of that old world knack and workshop experience to be rounded out. And the expectation of new world workplace experience hampers a lot of the background needed to become a full-fledged sign guy. Have you trained or painted anything recently? And he, he said that he has actually started training uh, two new grasshoppers, which which is what he calls uh, his students, uh, Joe and Bridget with grasshoppers as well. Um, but they unfortunately had to stop due to COVID. So once, uh, once he's able to, he will bring them back in and he'll continue teaching them. So the next question was interesting. I asked him if he had any favorite ghost signs in Winnipeg. And he said, no, um, it's under layers of paint, which I guess is he's referring to his own uh, baby mural that... Um, that got uh, defaced and then got painted over, unfortunately, years later. Um, so it, it sits completely covered at this time. Where can someone go to learn this skill today? And he said, 10,000 hours after being taught some of the basics from an old sign writer is the only and best way to learn this. And, it's always, and it always starts with learning to draw what you want to paint. And then the last question was, what's the greatest compliment that you can pay to any sign writer or a sign painter? Um, and he said, I think it is better to tell you what not to say to a sign writer. Can you do it cheaper? No artist likes hearing that. The time, the materials, the experience, please respect it. You get an artist and they will always come out. There, there's no way that the computers will eliminate them because it's in our genes. As long as there's people that are dedicated enough to learn well and have a little bit of discipline with it, it'll never end. People always need it. You can put a sticker on a brick wall, but it will come off. If you paint, it'll stay put.